So uh, welcome to our R Club session. Um, today I'm going to talk about this R package called Patchwork. Um, that's because I was talking with um, someone this week, and um, I realized we haven't actually spoken about this package. Um, and um, um, it's a pretty fun, small package. Um, for uh, the user and it's quite helpful. Um, um, and for the longest time, it was a GitHub only package, but now it's actually available on CRAN. So I thought we could um, you know, talk about it. Uh, so you can find this Google Doc link uh, from the uh, list of all the sessions. And so <clears throat> this R package, Patchwork uh, extends ggplot2, um, and so if you can, if you can, please install both of them using this code over here. Um, um, while we run the, while we explore the rest of the things, so <clears throat> I only put two links here, really, because um, these are the two master links. So the first link, oh, I mean the two main links, sorry. Um, so this first main link is the one for the CRAN page for Patchwork. So let me zoom in here. Right, so we'll see that Patchwork is um, a fairly small R package. So we see that it imports ggplot2. Um, it's also going to import, for example, Grid, which is another visualization package. Um, and then it like is related really to like all the grid packages. So like, um, for example, is suggest the grid extra package. Um, now, uh, this package was made by Thomas Lean uh, Peterson, who is an R Studio employee now, but I think he started making this package before he joined R Studio. Um, and it actually might be one of the reasons why they hired him. Um, I don't really know. Um, and so, <clears throat> Um, the GitHub page for this package is fairly complete, and we might actually look into it a little bit just for accessing some of the code. But then there's this website here called um, uh, patchwork.data-imaginist.com, which is where um, there's a nice like package down version of describing this work, this package. So that's the main one I wanted to open. Um, and so that's the second link I have here on the Google Doc. So let's open that link, uh, the data imagine is one. I'll open it in a new tab. And so <clears throat> let me zoom in a bit more. Cool. Um, so uh, the goal here, as stated by Thomas, is to make it ridiculously simple to combine plots into the same graphic. Um, and so really, like, uh, if we look into patchwork in more detail, it's actually defining, um, for the end user, it's really defining a couple of operations that you can do with graphs. So it's, gonna, it's kind of like defining the algebra be behind graphs. So it's going to define a plus symbol, um, uh, an asterisk or multiplication operation, a, divide, a division symbol. Um, and so you know, if you're thinking more abstractly, what does it mean to like divide plots or to multiply plots or things like that? Um, so we'll learn a bit more about that. Uh, the basic operation though is adding. So that's gonna be the, um, the plus symbol. So here's a quick example that they have. So first they load the ggplot2 package. That's the one that's gonna uh, be helpful for, for making some graphs. And then patchwork is the one that is going to um, uh, help us combine the two graphs. So we've seen in the past that we can save a ggplot2 uh, plot into an R object. So here they're saving uh, one plot as p1 and the second one as p2. Um, uh, exact like plots don't, don't really matter for this. And uh, but then once we have the two plot objects, P1 and P2, we can add them by the, using P1 plus P2. So where, 
can anyone here tell me where patchwork is, is being used on this example code? Where do you think it's actually being used? Like we don't have a function, a new function that looks like a patchwork function, right? So like another way of answering this question is like, um, let's say you run the code without loading library patchwork. Where do you think you're gonna get an error? Uh, yes, Nick. Um, so it's like the using the plus operator in the last line, P1 plus P2. Um, exactly. Yeah. So this is a bit, uh, this is a bit of a tricky question because ggplot2 itself defines a plus operator, right? That's how we are able to expand um, um, and build a ggplot2 uh, graphic, right? Because we're adding like layers. Um, like the ggplot2 is based on this idea of the grammar of graphics, which is where we have uh, multiple layers of information. And so the first information layer is like, what is the data? The second one is like, what do we want to plot on it? Um, sorry, like the base information is, a, is just the data. And then the layer here is like, we want to have a point. We could have lines, etc. And so um, we've used this plus symbol a lot for adding layers. Now, patchwork defines the plus operation, the addition operation for graphs. Um, so let's, you know, we can try this ourselves. Someone's just going to copy this to the keyboard, open our studio. Let me make this big. So I'm loading both. So, you know, here I do get that graph just to show how it, what would happen if we hadn't loaded patchwork. Let me restart the R session. Uh, I'm going to load ggplot2. Um, and then I'll try to combine the graphs. And then it says like, oh no, we get this error that says can't add p2 to a ggplot2 object. And that's because here this um, plus symbol is the one defined by ggplot2, not the one defined by patchwork. So after I load patchwork into my R Studio session, now I can run P1 plus P2. Right. So <clears throat> this might be all you need to learn about patchwork. Do um, um, you still have a question, uh, Nick? You have your hand raised. Oh, sorry. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> all right. I'll lower it. Cool. Uh, all right, so um, you know that's that's so simple, right? Like uh, like Thomas, I think really um, achieved his goal of making it super simple to combine graphs. Um, so that's a basic story. There's more stuff that we can do. So let's look at this more complicated stuff. So we're gonna make two new plots, P3 and P4. Right. So at this point, we have four plots. Um, and so we might want to combine them as P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4. Um, so if I do that, you know, um, um, patchwork was like, okay, we have four plots. Let me make a, a, a two by two matrix uh, showing all the four plots. Uh, and that might be what you want, or maybe not. Maybe you want to control a bit more the layout. And so um, the example they have here is, what if you want to have the first three plots on the first row and the last one on the second row? So here we need, we need to start using more uh, operations for combining the plots. So, <laughs> This is kind of like making like, you know, uh, doing math with plots. So we're going to say P1, then um, this pipe symbol is going to say like, okay, the next one, it's going to be P2 pipe symbol because we want to then combine P3. And all of those, we want them to be grouped, to, grouped together. So that's where we're going to use the parentheses there. And we want the next row. So it's kind of like we have our numerator is going to be P1 plus P2 plus P3 divided by uh, uh, a denominator, which is going to be P4. So that's like, um, 
you know, the syntax for patchwork. Um, I'm actually curious to see what happens if we do P1 plus P2 plus P3 divided by P4. Ah, that seems to work also. Um, right. Uh, I get the first plots on the top and the, that last one on the bottom. Um, so the math, I guess, uh, works both ways. Um, so um, this is how you can start to see like how we're going to start like uh, combining graphs. So there's that's the basics of patchwork. There's a couple more guides on what we can do. Um, so there's the getting started vignette, which is going to walk through again like the plus operation. But now there's going to be a couple new actual R functions. One of them is called the labs function. Um, and that's because we can add a subtitle. Um, uh, and that's this labs operation is not, this function, sorry, is not from patchwork itself. It's from ggplot2. So here we're, this is a, this is a, a bit of a weird example because although we have, P1 plus P2, then plus labs. These pluses come from mul from different packages. The first plus comes from patchwork. The second plus comes from ggplot2, the second addition operation. So here it's kind of, um, this is kind of saying almost like uh, P2, P1 plus, I'm going to say parenthesis, the rest of the stuff. So this first uh, addition is going to be from patchwork. The second one is going to be from ggplot2. Um, and so when we're using a, an addition operation from ggplot2, we're adding uh, a layer. Um, and so that's why we get this um, result here where um, the subtitle uh, label was added just on the second plot, not on the first plot. Um, um, cool. So <clears throat> we've also another way of, of combining plots. We've saw we've seen before that we can do P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4, um, and it uh, patchwork. You know, it tries to be smart, and here it makes a two by two layout. Uh, we can actually control that layout more specifically now using the plot underscore layout function. You'll notice here that we have to also use the plus symbol. Um, and so here we can say like, oh, let's make let's make it kind of like into a matrix. So these arguments are basically the same ones as the ones from a matrix. Um, in R, where we say like, okay, we want to have three rows, and instead of filling everything by row, we want to just fill it by columns. So that's why we're going to say by row equals false. Um, so if we do that, uh, you know, now we have um, a matrix here that has three rows. We fill the first um, column of it, and then we start filling the next one. We don't have actually enough plots to fill the rest of it. That's why we have two empty slots uh, in our resulting graphic in the end. Um, cool. Um, now, another way of doing this, if you don't want to use a plot underscore layout and think about like how graphs are going to be filling up this matrix is to start using the like the division operator and the pipe operator. So the division operator is basically, if you think of it of like numerator and denominator, so we're gonna have uh, uh, P1, the first plot divided by the second plot, P2. So let me make that over here. Um, and so like, what do you think is going to happen if I do P P1 divided by P2 divided by P3? Do you, any of you have an idea what's going to happen? Do you think we're going to get an error? So I think we're just going to get three rows. That's what I think is going to happen. 
And I think it's going to be P1, then P2, and then P3. Um, so let's see what happens. So actually, I don't know what P1 is. P1 was uh, this MPG versus dispersion. P2 is the box plots. P3 is this like curve. So P1 divided by P2 divided by P3. Um, we get the scatter plot first, the box plot second, and curve third. So we're getting, I think, um, we're just putting them one row, one per row type of thing. Um, I don't think this is actually going to be like actual algebra where things get reversed. Nope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if we start using parentheses and stuff, this is not like actual algebra where like we end up with like um, a reverse order of things, right? Um, cool. So just grouping them by rows. Um, now, if you want to nest them and stuff, so the, the pipe operator here is going to actually be for representing columns of the plot. And then the division operator is going to be for say, specifying by rows. So uh, here we can say we want the first column to be P1 completely. And then the second column, actually, we want it to be two plots. So we want P2 first on the top right, and then P3 on the bottom right. Um, so that is like uh, pretty, uh, you know, easy to use, I think, syntax. Because what would be the other way of doing this? Let's try to use the plot layout. So I do P1 plus P2 plus P3. Eh plus P3, plus uh, plot layout. Now I need to think of it uh, as a matrix. So I need to say like, okay, I want two columns. Um, 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 and if I just run that, um, I do get my scatter plot here on the top left. Um, the box plots on the top right. This curve though is on the bottom left. We wanted it actually in the bottom right. Um, so I might need to do more work behind the scenes to say like, actually, um, I want to move this, um, this plot from the bottom left to the bottom right. And then I want the scatter plot to take the full first column. So it's, um, there are ways of doing this. Um, we create graphics, but like it's going to involve a lot more code than simply using this pipe and division syntax that was defined by patchwork. Um, um, cool. Now there's another like little function that is actually um, a patchwork function, which is plot underscore annotation. And so this one can be used for adding a big title to the full composition, um, to the full like uh, combination of plots. So plot underscore annotation with the argument title, that's where we can like add a little title to our whole thing. Um, and so if we're thinking about graphs for papers, we wouldn't necessarily do this because we, the title of a plot becomes part of the information we provide to the journal, right? It's not included in the plot. But let's say we're making, we want to make a quick plot for a presentation. We might actually include the title of the plot in the actual plot, right? Um, um, uh, so, this is a nice feature, but I don't think we'll use it as much. Um, um, it is useful if you're making a quick exploratory plot and you want to you know, show it to your collaborators um, and you want you know, the plot to include all, you know, the description of what it contains, right? So let's say that like we want to tweet this image 
it already includes like enough information to describe what's going on, right? Or I mean, that would be the idea, right? If we had a, a better title, let's say. Um, there's also this option called tag on school levels. Um, so that's for, let me use it. Uh, let me use tag underscore levels uh, on our previous plot. I'm gonna add it to the plot annotation call. Um, and so now we get like a one, a two, and a three, a Roman one, two, and three. So this actually could can be quite useful because um, we want to we want might we. We might want to label things as like A, B, and C, for example. Let me try if I, what happens if I use a parenthesis? Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't like the parenthesis type. Um, I am. So A, Bs, and Cs, for example, that is quite useful because um, a lot of times for, when we're combining plots for a paper, we actually add the A, Bs, and Cs uh, using, let's say, Illustrator, for example. Um, uh, so I think these tag levels is the option we're going to use the most instead of the title one. So something like that is probably what we want to be making, right? A, Bs, and Cs, and then describe everything else in the legend of the of the plot in our papers. Um, cool. So let's. Um, so that is like most of what we need to know, but. Um, um, there's actually more stuff that is that this um, um, patchwork provides, um, and so there's a couple of guides here that we can explore a bit more. Um, one of them is like let's look at plot assembly, um, and I want to look at plot assembly mainly because of this. What do you notice here in this graph? Plot one and plot two. You know, what what is the main special thing going on in this code? Do you notice, um, like here on, on the left side, we have a plot that has grid lines. On the right side, we have a plot that doesn't have grid lines. It looks um, like a, a GG plot and a base R plot. Exactly. Yes. So um, so that's something very very nice of patchwork. Um, some of these other um, Packages that combine um, plots are only, let's say, for ggplot2 graphics. Patchwork can actually work with base R graphics. Now it needs a little bit of a it needs, it needs a little bit of a specific syntax, and the specific syntax here is that we need to use this tilde symbol before the base R plotting code, right? Because um, if I take that, you know, everything after the tilde. And copy it into my session in our studio. Um, you know, I get I get my base R graph, but if I like save it into you know, P base, uh, P base is actually a null, right? So it's, it doesn't have anything. That that's one of the issues with like base graphics. They don't uh, they don't return like objects. That contain the graph and all that information, unlike ggplot2 uh, graphics. Um, so that's where like patchwork is doing a lot of work behind the scenes for us in order to actually be able to combine the two graphics. Um, so the code might be a bit like a little bit messy, right? Because maybe you have, let me try this tilde one plus tilde another one. Let's call this main Leo. Um, I don't think that actually worked. Let me try it again without the tilde at the top. Nope. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm not sure we can combine two base graphics. It's probably possible, but um, um, but looks like the first graph had to be a G plot two graph. Um, so this is something that I, I would be curious to look in more detail in the documentation later on to see we can what is the correct syntax for combining two base R graphics using uh, patchwork. Um, maybe it's maybe I need to use a parenthesis. 
Uh, yeah, so this looks a little bit more complicated. Um, um, and I have an idea why that is. Um, um, and that might be because of what are the methods defined for this plus operator. Um, and so I need to provide something that will then trigger using the patchwork plus operator, not the uh, not the plus operator that is defining R for other operations. Um, cool. Um, so, um, uh, what else can we do with patchwork? Um, Uh, here they say that actually what's going on behind the scenes is that they have this function called wrap underscore elements for combining uh, for combining different up, uh, plots. So let me try this wrap elements on two of them. So I'm gonna do wrap elements plus another wrap elements. And this one here, I'll be all like uh, main equals view. Yes, so that's that's actually how you can combine two base R graphics using these wrap elements code. Awesome. Um, you know, uh, there might be situations where we want to do this. Um, I. So um, uh, I'm going to skip the rest of that plot assembly one. And just look a little bit at controller layout. So controller layout, I mentioned that there were uh, more operators beyond the plus and the division. We'd be using the pipe one. Uh, but there's another one, like there's the asterisk, which is the multiplication one. And so that is a, bit, a little bit of um, um, you know, conceptually like weird, why would, we, would you want to multiply something? Why do we want to multiply plots, right? Um, and so before we get to that, there's this nice uh, empty plot that they define in patchwork called plot spacer. Um, and so here they're using P1 plus an empty plot plus P2 plus um, an empty plot plus P3 plus another empty plot. Right, and so you might want to do this if you know that later on maybe you're going to take this plot and edit in Illustrator and add some text um, to it, for example, um, or something like that. Um, uh, you know, you could use this as a background image on a on a Google slide, and then add some text box, uh, you know, for a presentation, something like that. Um, or I don't know, maybe you want to have a photo of the person that, who actually made the plot. Um, so those are just some ideas of why you might want to have like an empty white space. Um, um, we've seen how to use plot underscore layout. Um, plot underscore layout actually has some more options. So this is like if we want to specify that the first column we want it to be twice as wide as the second column, we can use this width argument um, where we are giving it here two values, two on one for specifying how wide we want each of the columns to be. This is, let's say, if some plots need more space, more visual space, you can give them, you can, you can control how much space you're giving them uh, using that. Uh, and we can get into some specifics about like units and things like that. Um, but what I wanted to look into was, uh, where did I see the plus symbol? Sorry, not the plus, the multiplication. Um, oh, I guess I'm in the wrong guide. Uh, sorry, that was the adding annotation to patchwork. Um, um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So this is where I get in, we get into the plus symbol. So we saw before that, that uh, we can add uh, tag levels using plot underscore annotation, right? So here we have like 
annotation is equal A, and that adds like the A, B, and C to each other plus. Uh, but in some scenarios, we might want to edit a bit more um, how um, uh, we're specifying like labels and stuff for each of these um, plots. And so that's where like some new operators come into play. One of them is the AND operator. Um, and so what will this do? For example, um, let's, let me do P1 plus P2 plus P3. Again, so I'll do P1 plus P2 divided by P3. Um, let's add the plot annotation tag levels equals A. So that adds A, B, and C. Uh, but now let's say that like maybe the text is too small for me. So I'm gonna use theme and, and I wanna change the theme. So I'm gonna use um, the and operator. And like actually chose something too big. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm making the plot, I'm giving more area to my plot. And so let's see what changed, right? So uh, what I just did here was I made the base size uh, 20 for all of my ggplot2 plots. And uh, I changed the theme from the default theme that it has gray background with gray lines into the black, uh, black and white template uh, or theme, sorry, from ggplot2 that has uh, a white background with the gray lines. Um, and so you notice here that this applied the theme to all three plots. If I had just used the plus operator, what would have happened there, right? If I use a plus operator here, is this gonna be a plus operator from ggplot2 or a plus operator from uh, Patchwork? Is it ggplot2? Yes, that would, it would have been a ggplot2 uh, plus operator. And at that point, it uh, likely would have just added this information to the last plot. Let's see how that works. Um, um, and so we can see here that A and B still have the default background, the, 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 the gray background with white lines, uh, but then panel C, which was our last plot, now has the, the black and white background or theme um, um, with like the bigger um, labels and all of that. And that's because that's a base size argument from theme underscore BW. Um, uh, so that and operator is pretty useful because otherwise we would need to do uh, P1 plus theme plus P2 plus theme divided by P3 plus theme. Um, um, and so here we get the plot that we want, but the code is a lot messier, right? Because we had to repeat that theme operation three times. So that and operator defined by patchwork is pretty powerful because it's basically saying like, okay, apply this particular ggplot2 layer to every single plot that we have in our patchwork composition. Um, so that is pretty neat. Um, uh -huh. um, I see here that there's more information about the tag prefix. If we want to add like figure dot something, a dot something, like separator and suffix. So we could actually probably here um, uh, have like a parentheses b um, using this tag prefix, tag separator, and tag suffix. Um, so let me do that quickly. Let me find one um, here. So let's use tag prefix. We're gonna use a open parenthesis tag 
suffix, we're going to use a close parenthesis. And so that's how we can get um, a plot that has A parenthesis B, um, sorry, uh, open parenthesis A, close parenthesis, then the same thing for B and C, right? Um, I like I I like using this on the plots that I make, um, and I normally do this with Illustrator, so I could actually just switch to using patch, Patchwork for doing these type of things uh, for combining plots. Um, and um, I want to find the the multiplication operator. And I don't know where I saw it. Mm. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> see, this multiplication operator um, is like a bit interesting because we saw how we can use this an operator for applying something to all the plots. For example, here they're using the minimal theme for all the plots, but uh, uh, the multiplication operator is a little bit different because that one, instead of applying it to the last plot that we made, it applies it to uh, uh, to whatever is the current nesting level. Uh, so for that, I, we, we need to maybe look more into detail about what are the nesting levels in, in patchwork, but um, potentially this opens the door for editing specific plots. Now, um, you'll notice that here they're using this patchwork object. And what was that object? Uh, that's actually here, they save the output of their, um, of their patchwork composition which is like P3 divided by P1 um, and then P2 in this case. And uh, this actually allows them then to modify specific parts of a plot. So let me do it. Let me add this composition. Uh, and so let's look at the length of patchwork. Um, that's 10. Mm, that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting three. Um, names of patchwork. Um, so here we have data layers, etc. all the stuff from gplot2. Uh, but I saw that we can do what is patchwork one. So that's a gplot2 object, I'm not a gplot2 object. And here we're out of, out of them. Um, and so my guess here is that we have two elements in patchwork because we have this first P3 divided by, and because we use the parentheses, parentheses operation for P1 and P2, that's where I think we have them nested inside. And that's why patchwork uh, parentheses, double bracket two has um, a patchwork object. Potentially, yes, um, and, and, and inside that second element, that's where we have the, the two plots, P1 and P2. So we can always access, after saving the composition into an object, we could always go back into it and then start editing it. So let me, let me just show you how that would look like. So here I'm going to edit that second element by using theme minimal. And I'm going to print patchwork now. Uh, and if I zoom in, you'll see here that I edited this, um, our, the second plot of this, of our second uh, row. Um, so, you know, you could always make some functions that like, uh, go into more of the details of patchwork and start playing around with the data and stuff. Um, in case you need to add, edit any of the, you know, let's say sub panels of a, of a patchwork plot, or if you need to extract them um, and then make a new composition, for example. Let's say you just save the patchwork object that has the three plots. 
but then you later decide we don't we don't actually need the top one we just need the bottom two you can then extract the data again make a new composition type of thing um, cool so let me stop recording mm -hmm.